Hello, Concordia. It's wonderful to be back, even if virtual. Hi, I'm Liz Schreyer. I'm president and CEO of the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition. And I want to begin by sharing a story. Now, my story took place about two years ago this fall. And looking back, the timing is surreal. I was honored to give the annual Copeland Lecture at the CDC headquarters. And frankly, it's more typically slotted for a prominent academic, a scientist, perhaps on the latest AIDS vaccine research, certainly not my wheelhouse. I was surrounded by doctors and researchers, many in white lab co coats, and I truly thought, what am I doing here? But I do recall in preparation for my speech, I asked several experts, what kept them up at night? And nearly to a person, the answer was a global flu pandemic, an infectious disease that we weren't prepared for. But I also asked them what gives them hope, and they said science, that we either had or could find the answers to big challenges. So if we have the know-how, then when it comes to keeping us safe, do we have the political will to make the necessary investments in global health, not just in America, but in Bangladesh, in Burkina Faso, and beyond? So yes, I gave an entire speech on the imperative for the political will to invest in global health preparedness in the fall of 2019. Little did any of us know what would come in just a few months. Today, in the midst of a global pandemic, so much is clear. There is no way to stop a global pandemic without a global response. You know, after the Ebola crisis, there was not one, but there were four commissions on how to stop a future outbreak. Two of those commissions actually set a deadline for investing in global health systems. We missed that deadline, 2020. But this time around, in the midst of this global pandemic, we can't afford to wait. We've gotten many things right, like the Herculean effort of developing the vaccines in record time. But one thing we still haven't gotten right is the scale of our global response. So here we are on the doorstep of a global COVID-19 summit. And this is the exact moment we can get it right. But will we? From where I sit in Washington, there's almost nothing policymakers agree on these days. But in Congress, there's bipartisan consensus that the U.S. needs to lead a global response and prepare for the next pandemic. Earlier on last year, the U.S. GLC and others called for emergency supplemental resources for an international response, and Congress responded, providing $18 billion to date. And there are dozens of bipartisan proposals to strengthen global health going and moving through Congress. And the administration has certainly taken action. President Biden has committed 580 million vaccine doses globally with an upcoming announcement of hundreds of millions more. That's more than the rest of the world combined. Plus, we're financing regional manufacturing of a billion more doses. But in my conversations with our most ardent congressional champions, they all agree we're not investing nearly enough to put an end to this pandemic, especially given the Delta variant and who knows what's next. The truth is we are falling short on the global stage. We all have to do our part. But we've seen too few commitments at the G7, the G20. Today, nearly 6 billion doses of the vaccine have been administered globally, but less than 2% of those in low-income countries. According to research at Duke University, 7 billion doses of high-quality vaccines should be available this year and an additional 14 billion doses by the end of next year. They believe enough to meet the global needs. So while we, ne we will need to make sure we get the manufacturing right, we can't stop there. First, the U.S., our allies, private sector, nonprofits, all of us need to commit to vaccinate 70% of the world by this time next year. Frankly, without shots in the arm, this pandemic will not end. 
Our friends at CARE found that for every $1 spent on doses, we need to spend $5 to support effective delivery. That is going to be the only way that we succeed. Second, we need to dramatically scale up testing, treatments, PPE, oxygen, supply chains to save lives now. And third, we need to build capacity, invest in global health infrastructure now so we will never be so ill-prepared again. I learned a long time ago that good policy moves more quickly when policymakers feel the support of their voters. You know, years ago I was on Capitol Hill on a day of a vote in the budget to cut 50% of foreign aid, which includes global health. I was there accompanying Admiral Jim Stravitas, who was testifying alongside Bill Gates and Ben Affleck on the importance of foreign assistance. Following the hearing, Senator Graham took all of us to the Senate anteroom. Over the next hour, about 25 senators stopped by to meet our experts. I got the chance to greet each senator, and we talked about local town hall meetings that I had hosted in their hometowns with their constituents, veterans, business leaders, faith leaders, gathered together to talk about how leading globally mattered locally. These local connections resonated, perhaps just as much as the selfies with Ben Affleck. But that afternoon, the amendment to cut 50% of the foreign aid budget was defeated 96 to 4. Constituents matter. Today, these political engagements continue, even on Zoom. Countless town hall meetings we've hosted with policymakers. Just recently, one with Senator Jerry Moran, where thousands of Kansans tuned in to talk about global hunger, global health, and how it matters to Kansas. Constituents matter. Ultimately, the question is, what's it worth to get this right? You know, today, families worldwide, they sit around their kitchen table. They're worried. They're worried about keeping their kids in school, paying their bills, fears for their health, especially their elderly parents. And as long as this virus is spreading anywhere, no one is safe, and we're not going to get our economy back on track. The, the International Chamber of Commerce found that the global economy stands to lose $9 trillion if we fail to ensure developing countries have access to vaccines. This, this summer, the USGLC launched a new campaign. It's our most significant ever to tell this exact story. And we're asking one question, what's it worth? To ensure that a global pandemic never ever happens again, to, to stop the next global crisis before it spirals out of control. You know, it's not just about the global pandemic, obviously that's what we're focused on, but it's global hunger and climate and refugees, poverty, conflict, because let's face it, they all impact our daily lives. So I ask you, foreign aid, diplomacy, global health, what's it worth? It means healthier lives here at home. It means safety for those who serve. It means more customers. For me, it's simple. You know, after 15 months into the pandemic, I finally hugged my 88-year-old mom. I watched her hold my then four-month-old granddaughter for the first time. So what's it worth for a small investment of effective foreign aid? This picture says it all. Everything. The fate of our world has never been more interconnected. History is being written as we speak, as we meet. Will we look back on this week's global summit as the moment when promises were made, or when bold action was launched? Will world leaders, the US, all of us step up? Will we be the ones to stop this pandemic and have the political will to make the investments in a global response? So I ask, what's it worth? The answer is simple, everything.